So I'm a big believer that when it comes to training self-defense, especially when you're working with somebody new, that a lot of times it's better to start with normal human reaction. And a perfect example of this, um, there's a lot of different names and terms for it. I've heard it as a spear, I've heard it as a shield, I've heard it as a shell. Um, I first learned it as the, the wedge. So there's a lot of different variations, but again, the, like the approach is pretty much the exact same thing. And it's pretty much just the idea of how you're initially entering in an altercation. Because you have to keep this in mind. When you're out on a street fight, most guys don't have experience that you're coming across with, which means that we're not gonna be squared up, nor is this person gonna be throwing clean jabs jab crosses, hooks, body shots, all that. They're gonna start just wailing. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that most of these fights are going to start from some form of confrontation. Again, it's not gonna be one that all of a sudden he just comes out of the gate swinging and we haven't even said anything to each other. So typically, either we're both kind of in this position where we're arguing, screaming at each other, or I'm trying to deescalate and he's getting in my face. Either which way there is some form of confrontation and what you're looking for is that initial reaction of what is this person going to do? So understand this. if. He's the one that's getting verbal, he's getting aggressive, and I'm just sitting here trying to de-escalate this. Understand that if you are conscious of what's going on, a good de-escalation stance is palms out facing them, elbows are tucked in a little bit, you're in a fighting stance even though it may not appear that way, but I'm ready to react to whatever comes. Now understand this, when we're this close, again, he's probably not gonna start throwing just straight jabs because he's not gonna have the power to it, which means that in these situations, especially when they're trying to catch you off guard, they're gonna come out of the gate swinging with haymakers or just wide, wild punches. So in those types of situations, this is where we start working what our normal human reactions are. And again, if you're working with somebody that's brand new or if you're brand new, understand that most people, if you yell like duck, they're gonna do this. If you yell heads up, they're gonna do this. So it's just kind of like a natural reaction when somebody gets caught off guard, they just kind of shield their head a little bit and throw their hands over just to kind of protect all aspects of the head. So we utilize that and we utilize that as an entry technique when somebody catches us off guard. Now again, if I'm aware of what's going on and I understand that there's a confrontation, I'm waiting for that kind of body language and behavior that's gonna tell me, hey, this guy's about to throw a wild punch. And when that happens and I see that the haymaker's coming, I'm going to shield my head and not only my, first of all, I'm not just gonna stand here and shield my head and let that punch come because even if I shield my head and he makes that contact, there's still a good chance that it's gonna hit me behind the head. So instead, I'm going to utilize this shield at the same time that I step into him because now when he throws that haymaker, I've closed in the distance and then from here we can start working on follow-up techniques, but now I've completely avoided the punch. I'm in his personal space, so if he wishes to engage in strikes from here going further, he either has to step back to throw punches or he has to tie up with me hoping that he can throw elbows and everything from there. So it works in my favor. One thing that I do wanna say when you're doing this, so when I shield, there's a couple little details that you have to pay attention to. First of all, I wanna make sure that my chin is tucked, but I'm not looking down. I'm simply just tucking my chin a little bit. You can shrug your shoulders just to kind of protect your neck and throat a little bit. I am shielding my head, depending on how you do it, 100% depends on you. But the biggest thing is I wanna make sure I'm coming straight into their center line. I don't, even if he's throwing like a right haymaker, I'm not chasing the haymaker. I'm not chasing the wild punch because if I overcommit to this side, one, I'm now completely exposing my back where he, exactly, he can easily just latch on and start taking my back and now I just went from an opportunity to get control to now this person's on my back and my head and everything is exposed. So I wanna make sure that I come straight in. So when that punch is coming, I'm here. And now I'm in his center line, I'm in close to the point to again where he's not able to throw strikes as easily, but it works in my favor because I'm gonna come in extremely aggressive. So when I come in with this, if I accidentally hit him with my head across the face, awesome. If my elbows in the process are coming up and striking the jaw, striking the neck or whatever, awesome. So it's working in my favor because I'm going to essentially check him and knock him off balance a little bit. Well, also at the same time, I'm blocking and potentially throwing a little bit of damage in there at the same time. The key with this though is what do we do afterwards? So again, I'm de-escalating, he's yelling, screaming, all of a sudden he throws that punch and I'm in. Now from here again, you have options depending on one, what the circumstance is. You know, maybe it wasn't a punch, maybe he was throwing it with a wild knife or something, but you have, you have to understand that there's different approaches of what do we do once we enter. First off, I would simply just lock on, tie up with the person, because either way, this is a good place to kind of collect your thoughts and decide, okay, what's actually going on from here? And then you can decide, what do I need to do? If I'm looking to just simply control the person from here, well, maybe I'll keep this overhook and switch, start posting on the head and just simply get control of this person here and hope that I can just kind of control them until they calm down or again, until their health arrives. Um, and there's a multiple different variations of types of situations. Like maybe we work and start kind of putting them in their front headlock a little bit. Maybe we scroll 
take them all the way down to the ground and just kind of control them. So that's one option. You can simply just work in here, put pressure. You can work, you know, different sweeps and just kind of work into side control positions or here and again, we're literally just trying to find different ways to take the person down to the ground, not throwing them, not, you know, suplexing them, but just taking them down to the ground to where, yes, it might hurt a little bit, but I'm just utilizing it as more of a control position. If we're looking to just completely finish it from here, get in here, tie up, maybe I just start working close elbows, hammer fist, knees to the groin, kicks to the inside of the leg, elbows again, like you, there's multitude of different options of strikes that you can do once you enter in this area. So either which way, once you get in, you have options. You can control the person, take the person down, finish with strikes. I can literally just utilize this to kind of get in, tie up with the person. I can pass the arm through and just simply clear them out of the way so that I can create distance and I can just completely disengage altogether. So you do have options from there. If you are new to self-defense or just like learning how to protect yourself, it's good sometimes to just work with normal human reactions again both for newer students but also just even more advanced guys you can build off that stuff a lot easier so simply just however you want to call it the shell shielding spearing wedging whatever it's just the idea that you're utilizing going from your de-escalation to a quick reaction closing the distance right away and then again you have options from there so give it a shot let us know what you think we'll see you next time